Okay, again, thanks a lot for coming out. And again, let's give a big hand. This is uh, Chris. Come on. Big Def Con, welcome. All right, thank you. Oh, these lights are bright. And I just took a shot. All right, this is the environment path less traveled. It's full of easy privilege escalation phones. I'm a security researcher. My name's Chris Campbell. I'm a security researcher for the Harris Corporation. I am not, uh, do not represent them in this talk. This is all personal research. Standard disclaimer applies. I used to be on the Army Red Team. Any former Red Team people here? None. <laughs> they love me so much. Uh, I'm one of the developers of PowerSploit. Does anyone use PowerSploit? Yeah. Awesome. I'm on Twitter. I'm normally yelling at people at ObscureSec, and my blog is ObscureSec.com. This is my first time talking at DEF CON. I've wanted to talk at DEF CON for many, many years, so I'm pretty excited and, and terrified at the same time. All right, so let's start with Windows sucks. As someone who's been forced to work with it for over a decade, I can say that with great authority. It sucks a lot. And Windows 8 is terrible. But it does suck a lot less now because of PowerShell. Right? Everybody using PowerShell now? Yep. We finally have a full shell like the rest of the world. So PowerShell is awesome and is definitely moving Microsoft's product, their flagship product forward and gives us a lot more power. But moving forward in the next version of Windows, in, in Windows 9, we're going to have some new and exciting things in the form of OneGet. OneGet is already shipping with PowerShell version 5. It's a package manager. Has anyone ever heard of OneGet? Wow. That's more people than I thought was going to raise their hand. How many people have heard of Chocolatey NuGet? Yeah. That's Chocolatey NuGet is awesome. How about PSGet? All right. So all of these utilities have lots of purposes and the reason I put this talk together was to kind of highlight these things because I, every con I would go to I'd mention it and people had no idea what I was talking about. So full disclosure, Chocolatey NuGet is written by a friend of mine. Uh, I do beat up on it in this talk uh, but he is a really good guy and he works really hard and he's patched almost all of the bones uh, before today. So these things will help simplify if you're an admin or you're a pen tester and you want to advocate how to patch third party applications. Moving forward, this is going to be a way using OneGet to patch Adobe, Java, Flash, all the third party apps that you're paying money for other products. OneGet will allow you to patch those on a regular basis with easy uh, scheduled tasks. It also is great for researching vulnerabilities. So I'll t tell you one story about how I used it uh, in a few slides. And then another way is to build quick CTFs. I do that quite often. Uh, once I find a vulnerability uh, and I'm building a little environment for people to play around in, this speeds that entire process up and you, it gives you a little bit of ability to randomize what is on each box to make it look more real. All right, so these are quotes from the one get page. It's a new way to discover and install software packages for Windows. It's new, except everyone in every other language or every other operating system has had it forever. But it lets you seamlessly install and uninstall packages with a single PowerShell command. So it ships with PowerShell version 5, which is in beta right now. You can get it and download it, and it's actually open source, which is really cool. Let's give Microsoft a hand for starting to open source some of their products. So it's on GitHub if you want to check out the source code. That's there at the bottom. All right. Now my favorite package manager is Chocolatey NuGet. This is not technically in beta anymore. Uh, it has over 4 million downloads and over 2,000 unique packages. Uh, it's written by Rob Reynolds. It has over 30 contributors. It is open source as well. And recently Microsoft declared that it was a supported open source project. I really don't, honestly, I'm, it's not a knock on Microsoft. I have no idea what that means. I don't know if that means money uh, or, or what. But uh, Chocolatey is out there. If you've never used it, it's great, uh, but it's got a few problems. Uh, PSGET is specific to PowerShell. I just included it uh, just to, to be complete. PSGET is for, is like 
pip. Um, it, it's just a bunch of functions that have been screened by a few people uh, that you can grab easily and download and use. All right, so I was doing an, a long term engagement and I discovered Chocolatey Nougat being used and they had their pri own private repo server uh, in an enterprise. Has anyone ran into any of these package managers on a pen test? Anybody? Nobody. Yes. All right, so you're probably going to run into them in the future. So it's great that you're here. Uh, so I saw that it was being used. I found some, some privilege escalation vulnerabilities on their main baseline and then I later discovered that they kind of came from their use of chocolatey nougat. So they asked me to do a further review. So I reached out to Rob and uh, I told him, hey, I'm going to do some tests. He was like, cool. Um, I didn't realize that Rob was paying for his bandwidth. So that first day I just started downloading every single package and just shot his bill sky high and jacked up all his numbers on his website. Uh, I also blue screened the VM because in my infinite wisdom I decided that I was going to do it all from one VM. So I created a Chaco VM and I just said, you know, download star and, and install them all. So I tried to install 1800 uh, binaries on a single Windows 8 VM and I got the frowny face pretty quick. So let's go over a couple of the problems. It is 2014, is it not? Can we stop using HTTP to download installation files? So the top one is psget and this is currently on their website I believe. This is how they suggest that you install psget. Um, so what you're doing there is you're using the .NET web client object and you're downloading the contents of the get psget.ps1 script then you're piping it to IEX which is a alias for invoke expression so you're basically just downloading a script from an HTTP site and then executing it. It is 2014 people. Below that though you've got Chocolatey which had a similar uh, problem but he immediately fixed it as soon as I brought it up. But the installation itself was pulling down a uh, NUP KG uh, package which is just a zipped up PowerShell script over HTTP. So it itself had the exact same problem. But that's been fixed. All right, so the next thing I decided to do was to uh, to make this more parallel. So I created a bunch of uh, Windows VMs, some of them using Azure and got a nice call from the Azure abuse team. Um, but I decided to use Windows 7 and Windows 8 because not all the software supported uh, Windows 8 at that time. And then I still had a few blue screens. So the first thing I wanted to do, because it's my friend's repo, was no one was doing any quality check on the code or the, the actual binaries, that, the packages that were being submitted. So I wanted to see if it was being abused already with malware. So I scripted hashing every single one and there are tons of tools out there to do this. Um, one's built into sys internals now. Uh, so I was able to find, I scripted hashing all the new files and I found a hundred ones that uh, when I submitted the MD5s to VirusTotal it didn't know about. So then I scanned those and uh, 31 of them had detections. Now a lot of them were admin tools but there was some full blown malware including one that was straight up a interpreter binary that someone built a package for and put it up there. So most of those I believe are removed. <laughs> I believe. And uh, and I think Rob and, and the other developers are doing a good job looking for that now. Uh, so I also wanted to use the opportunity to write a new tool to look for privilege escalation vulnerabilities. As pen testers it's something we run into a lot. You get on a box as user, say through phishing, and you have to privilege escalate. Every way I've been taught is to, to do, run a series of commands to check ACLs, to go through everything manually. So PowerSploit was missing a privilege escalation module. So I looked for the common path based, file permission based, uh, service DLL preloading and I found a bunch and a lot of this talk was going to be about that but I had a lot of pushback from the vendors. So you can beat me up about it 
but I really got tired of dealing with them. So I'm not disclosing any of the, the silly vulnerabilities in their silly products and I'm not giving them any press at DEF CON. Uh, and most of the applications were so obscure that no one here really would care. But the talk that I followed mostly was this one. Has anyone, has anyone seen this talk? Uh, Encyclopedia of Windows Privilege Escalation. It's a couple years old but it's still very valid. It's a great talk. So I definitely wanted to, to give that talk a shout out. Here's some other resources. Chris Gates and Rob Fuller gave uh, um, a talk a couple times. I believe it was Ad is the New Black. Uh, that talk is great. Uh, the rest of this talk is mostly about subverting the path and I wrote a blog post about that a couple months ago at the bottom. And those other two are great resources for privilege escalation. So there were already, there was prior work uh, before I submitted this to DEF CON. Uh, I actually took this code almost completely and just rewrote each thing in PowerShell. Uh, so this was Windows Privest Check from Pentest Monkey. Has anyone used this? Couple people. It's, it's, it's actually really cool but it, it kind of defeats the purpose uh, in that you have to either compile it as a binary, put it down on disk, or uh, have Python installed on the box. So with PowerShell we don't need that. So I, I wrote a privilege escalation module that I was planning on releasing here. But then this guy, who's awesome, Harmjoy, Will, wrote PowerUp. Has anyone seen PowerUp? Couple people? All right, well, hopefully some more people. It's already on version 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, Will has added a ton of stuff and it is way better than what I wrote. So what we're doing right now is we're porting all of that. We're adding a few things that were in mind that aren't in his and that'll be the next privilege escalation module in PowerSploit. But it'll be 95% of Harmjoy's work. You can download this right now. It works great. All right. So back to the package managers. So the problem that one git suffers from already, and it hasn't even been really released yet, is that the repo server has to be trusted and right now there's so many people already using the chocolatey repo servers that they've decided not to stand up their own yet. Maybe they'll do, th do that in the future. Uh, we saw that over four million people have used the chocolatey repos uh, to download stuff but it, the chocolatey repo allows anyone, anyone in this room can quickly build a package and deploy it. So right now with one get, you have to explicitly go in and say yes I trust the chocolatey repo but it's already there so it's really easy to do and there are already a bunch of guides on the internet about hey just trust this repo. But the bottom line is all of the packet managers, either it's, whether it's written by Microsoft or written by anyone else, uh, they inherit all the vulnerabilities from both the repo server and the, the packages themselves. So here's, probably can't see that at all can you? Here's what a chocolatey package looks like. It's really basically two things. So it's this XML document with all the different descriptions. Um, and then it's a PowerShell script to install it and all the different switches and flags to install it silently. And that's really all it is. So it would be really easy for an enterprise to stand up their own repo server and then deploy their own packages for all of their uh, internal tools. So let's talk about the path. So it's really easy to see what's in your path. So in, in this screenshot, I have a few things. Does anyone see anything that could be problematic that is in my path? Say it louder. Python. Check your box right now. See if Python is sitting on the root of C. If it is, it probably inherited the permissions of the root of C which allow any user to write to any binary in that folder. So now we've created not just a DLL preloading problem, but we've created a problem where every service that is using the path to pull its DLLs can, can actually be abused. So there's something else that uses the path, uh, PowerShell version 3. So a really easy way to find, uh, to find this problem and DLL hijacking and d other DLL related issues is to use process monitor and there are lots of guides on the internet that show you how to do this. In this case, PowerShell version 3 will check the path for the existence of PS console host read line 
.ps1, .psm1, .psd1, .com, .exe, .bat, blah, 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 blah. Anyone have a guess as to what it does if it finds it? It wouldn't execute it, would it? So, any user on this box could just write ps console host readline.cmd and make it be net add myself to local admins and sit back and wait for an admin to just open PowerShell. As soon as the console shows up, that's executed and you've privilege escalated. So, the vast majority of the packages, well, now I'll show you that. So up top is what it used to look, the install for chocolate used to look like and then at the bottom is what it currently looks like. So the problem with chocolatey and all of its packages and why they were almost all vulnerable, including things like sys internals and, and tons of other utilities that if you're using chocolatey and you've already downloaded, you might want to check those out because they didn't go back to fix the permissions. They were dropping everything with, in uh, C chocolatey bin which any user had the ability to write to. So anyone who was using Chocolatey or OneGit with Chocolatey and installed packages, all of those packages are vulnerable to privilege escalation to the tune of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. So the fix was actually really simple. Uh, he is now using the all users profile. Can you guys see that? Yes, you can see it. So before the fix, all right, and that does not look great on this screen either. So before the fix, uh, since is the command to install something, C I N S T. Uh, you could ease, you could go into the actual chocolatey files and go in and change and add whatever commands you wanted. And then in the environment I was pen testing, they were running commands remotely to execute this locally to update everything. So I was able to get domain admin by just writing a uh, net user add command to add myself to domain admins and sitting back and waiting one day. In this case I'm just popping calc. So I really have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. So I have lots of friends and friends are good. So I'll start with Rob. Uh, Rob wrote Chocolatey and uh, he's done a great job fixing everything that I find and telling me when some of the stuff is just plain stupid. Uh, Matt Graber, he uh, the original author of PowerSploit, he's a really good friend of mine. Um, Joe Bialik from Microsoft helped me a lot. Uh, Will who wrote uh, PowerUp and Will Peteroy and Lee Holmes from the PowerShell security team. Uh, who, who worked through um, removing that feature from PowerShell version 4. And all of you guys who came to my first DEF CON talk, uh, I hope to have many more and hopefully the next ones are full hours. But thanks guys.